Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study. Everyone should be reading on their own, pondering his truths, and gaining a testimony for themselves by the power of the Holy Spirit. However, I would like to be a witness for the Savior that he lives, he will return, and we should all be preparing for that glorious day. And without further delay, let's go ahead and continue our studies. I will read and expound as we go along. Mosiah chapter 17. Elmer believes and writes the words of Abinadi. Abinadi suffers death by fire. He prophesies disease and death by fire upon his murderers. Verse 1, And now it came to pass that when Abinadi had finished these sayings, that the king commanded that the priest should take him and cause that he should be put to death. Verse 2, But there was one among them whose name was Alma, he also being a descendant of Nephi, and he was a young man, and he believed the words which Abinadi had spoken, for he knew concerning the inequity which Abinadi had testified against them. Therefore he began to plead with the king that he would not be angry with Abinadi, but suffer that he might depart in peace. Verse 3, But the king was wroth, and caused that Alma should be cast out from among them, and sent his servants after him, that they might slay him. Verse 4, But he fled from before them, and hid himself that they found him not. And he being concealed for many days did write all the words which Abinadi had spoken. Verse 5, And it came to pass that the king caused that his guards should surround Abinadi and take him, and they bound him and cast him into prison. So let's um, wrap these verses together. The number one thing that I take from this and that answers the question how these words were recorded that Abinadi was speaking. Obviously, there were people around them that were able to, to take note of the information. But as these verses illustrated, Alma specifically remember the words and he wrote the words of Abinadi. And so he was able to pass that on as well. So that's what I take from that. But also that the King Noah, he had an opportunity to turn away from the wickedness, the horrible thing they're about to do to a bit horrible, very horrible, what they're about to do to the prophet of Benadi. Elmo came to them pleading, saying, don't do this, but still didn't li listen, but actually went even further. Now they want to slay Elmo. So this is, this is just unfortunate, just very unfortunate. Verse six, after three days, Having concealed with his counsel with his priests, he caused that he should again be brought before him. Verse 7, And he said unto him, Abinadi, we have found an accusation against thee, and thou art worthy of death. Verse 8, For thou hast said that God himself should come down among, next page over, the children of men, and now for this cause thou shalt be put to death, unless thou would recall all the words which thou hast spoken evil concerning me and my people. Verse 9, Now Benadi said unto him, I say unto you, I will not recall the words which I have spoken unto you concerning this people, for they are true, and that they may know of, a, of their surety, I have suffered myself that I have fallen into your hands. Verse 10, Yea, and I will suffer even until death, and I will not recall my words. And they shall stand as a testimony against you. And if ye slay me, you will shed, will shed innocent blood. And this shall also stand as a testimony against you at the last day. Verse 11. And now King Noah, King Noah was about to release him, for he feared his word, for he feared that the judgments of God would come upon him. Verse 12. But the priests lifted up their voices against him and began to accuse him, saying, He has reveled the king. Therefore, the king was stirred up in anger against him, and he delivered him up that he might be slain. Verse 13, And it came to pass that they took him and bound him, and scourged his skin with faggots, yea, even unto death. So this word faggots, that's the one thing you want to keep in mind, and I know there's a negative connotation with it, but any words that I use, I always go with the positive connotations, if there's a positive available. But specifically, what they're illustrating here by that word and scourge his skin, 
what they basically did, and this is horrible to even think about, but I'm going to simplify it and make it not as graphic as it could be. Basically, what they did is they, pre they prepared fires, basically got the fire going, and put it on his Abin the Prophet Abinadi's skin, basically lit him up, you can say, and it started to burn him. And that's basically what happened. Verse 14. And now when the flames began to scorch him, he cried unto them, saying, verse 15, Behold, even as ye have done unto me, so shall it come to pass that thy seed shall cause that many shall suffer at the pains that I do suffer, even the pains of death by fire. And this because they believe in salvation of the Lord their God. Verse 16, And it came to pass that ye shall be afflicted with all manner of diseases, because of your inequities. Verse 17, Yea, and ye shall be smitten on every hand, and shall be driven and scattered to and fro, even as a wild, as a wild flock is driven by wild and ferocious beasts. Verse 18, And in that day ye shall be hunted, and ye shall be taken by the hand of your enemies, and then ye shall suffer, as I suffer, the pains of death by fire. Verse 19, Thus God executed vengeance upon those that destroy his people. O God, receive my soul. Verse 20. And now when Abinadi had said these words, he fell, having suffered death by fire, yea, having been put to death, because he would not deny the commandments of God, having sealed the truth of his words by his death. And I know some of us, and that concludes the chapter, some of us may be thinking, well, what about God preserving us? That is true. He will preserve us. But also keep in mind, other people have agency as well. And God may allow, unfortunately, horrible things to happen to very good people, even the prophets. But remember, there's a final judgment. So all those things that they do will come against them at the final judgment. But also in particular, as you can see with the prophet Abinadi, God did preserve him for the purpose of delivering his message. And Abinadi did that. God wanted Abinadi to warn the people to be an example, give him a chance to repent. And Abinadi knew himself, the prophet. He knew that God would preserve him. And he said it in the previous chapters, if you go back where he has a message to deliver and God is going to preserve him until that message is complete. And even while he was being burned, he was still speaking out. He was still delivering that message until it was complete. And he showed a great example of that regardless of people, what people threaten us with, regardless of what they do to us, when God has a message for us, when God has a purpose for us, when God has something that we need to do, he will preserve us. He will maintain us. That way his will be done. And what, what, what God needs to be done will happen because he'll make it possible. And even if horrible things happen to us, still remember, God is our eternal, eternal Heavenly Father and justice will, be, will come upon those that do wickedness and do horrible things. And I wanted to conclude with my testimony that I know God loves us and that I know prophets are real. God also loves us by giving us prophets that testify of him, of the Savior, and of things to come. And if we are willing to listen to those words, to follow the prophets, even our current prophets today, we will be guided and directed. We will not go down the path of wickedness. And if we are going down the path of wickedness, the words of the prophets can help us get back on track because of the atonement. I know that the resurrection is real. The Savior did rise from the grave. And because of that, we will all be reunited with our bodies, a perfect body with no weaknesses. And that is a glorious thing to think about. I know all these things are true. And I leave y'all with my testimony. In the name of the founder of peace himself, Jesus Christ. Amen.